Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you the future. The hashtag future. Copyright patent pending. Um, personal computing. Let's talk about personal computing. That is the average citizen who doesn't work in the IT field, who doesn't do much more than pay bills, browse the internet, social media, YouTube, documents, at, you know, writing documents, keeping track of the family finances through spreadsheets or online applications as they're becoming more prevalent. We're talking mom, pop, sis, grandma, grandpa, and great aunt Sandy. We're talking about your family. That's right. It's going to be one of those videos. So grab the popcorn and have fun. So the average person does not need a four core processor, does not need six gigabytes of dedicated video RAM. The average person does not need much more than a browser, access to online applications, maybe some local storage for offline use, but not much else. And that is where our friend the Chromebook steps in. Yes, I'm going to show you a Chromebook today. I'm sorry. I apologize. Don't punch me. No. This is, this is okay. This is good. But before we look at this Chromebook, and, and I want to tell you right now that when Chrome OS and Chromebooks started to hit the shelves, I was really skeptical. I'm like, there is no way. No way these are going to succeed. Who's going to buy this? The organization that I have worked for for the past 12 years now has nearly one Chromebook for every person in the entire organization. We now have, um, I don't know, three, 4,000 people in our organization. No, really, that many. And they all carry Chromebooks. And it was one of those things where I kind of saw it organically evolve and, or, and, and people, rather than forcing the Chromebook to do what their Windows or their Mac did, they adapted to what the Chromebook could do. Which, believe it or not, is quite a lot. And there's obviously, and many of the pundits for the Advan or the, the, the direction the computer industry is headed, there are many pundits, myself included, are a couple of things. Number one, you don't really own the software that you're using. You're merely licensing it. Some, it sometimes it'll be a free license for as long as the software is supported, and other times it's a subscription service like Office 365. But the point is, we're moving away from the traditional model of the personal computer. The traditional model of the personal computer being a system unit, be it an all-in-one or a tower and a monitor or a laptop, a keyboard with a mouse and a printer, with software that you purchase once and use it until the machine turns into dust, software that you don't have to pay renewal licenses for. The endless stream of updates did not exist in 1994. If you wanted to update software, you had to send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the supplier or manufacturer of the software, and they would then send you a disk full of patches. In fact, WordPerfect 5.1 was one such animal. Every time you replaced your printer, you had to write to WordPerfect or call them, and they would send you a floppy disk containing the necessary software to use that printer with WordPerfect. This is their traditional computer setup. Well, maybe an earlier example of one such thing. You know, this model is going away. It's dying. It really is. I mean, it's not gone, but the adoption rate of these traditional types of systems, again, this is an extremely early version, or maybe a bad example, but people aren't going out and buying these anymore. Or they are, but in less numbers. And that's not always a bad thing. It really isn't. Because I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, as the, as the honorary 
tech support person of my entire family, and I have reduced that role substantially because I started charging people. Um, I was called at all hours of the day and night solving virus problems, reinstalling operating systems, upgrading systems, going shopping with my family to help them pick out their next system. I still do that for free, of course. But it became a nuisance. And the people that are in my family are not IT professionals. They are not they're not professional uh, computer users of any kind. They're casual users. And that is where the Chromebook, Chrome OS, Android, etc. That is where these operating systems really shine. So let's take a look at this Chromebook. And yes, I am the man who had to take a call from my great aunt, Sandy. Love her dearly. She's really a sweetheart. Um and helped her, I not only helped her buy her Windows machine, but I also helped her keep it protected. And when she failed to run the updates on a regular basis, and my great uncle confided in me and said, you know, the reason that it's so infected is because I was looking at porn all day. Yes, that happened. Too much information. But you all understand, you've taken calls like that. You've accidentally stumbled on grandma's browsing history, and oh my god. It's happened to all of us. But with the Chrome OS platform, it really simplifies things so much. No more are the endless virus attacks. Yeah, we'll get there. It'll happen. No operating system, no matter what it is and no matter who designed it, is immune to viruses. No matter how much you patch your system and really stay vigilant, you are still it is still possible to get a virus or to be hacked into. If somebody really wants it bad enough, they're going to do it. Fort Knox is not impenetrable, and neither is your Linux machine. It may be better than some, but it's not impenetrable. And Chrome OS is not impenetrable. So what we have here is a Chromebook that uh, my department evaluated and decided not to buy. So what we did is we every, every year we purchase a couple of different devices from different manufacturers in cases where they won't loan them to us. In fact, I've had many devices actually loaned or on loan from Lenovo or Asus or Acer or whatever. Um, Lenovo has more than on more than one occasion sent me devices to evaluate when I ask for them, uh, often pre-production, which is really cool, or pre pre-release. Um, but we were looking at a solution, a smaller device um, that was a convertible device. That's a tablet and a notebook all in one. And we're sticking with the Chrome platform because it nicely meshes with our other four thousand Chrome devices. And um, these devices were to be used by teachers and in the classroom. So we bought a couple of different ones from different manufacturers. We bought a Lenovo, an HP, an Asus, an Acer, actually two Asus devices. And the ones that we ended up not buying, we um, are not keeping. We actually sent them back for credit. But there was, I, I specifically requested uh, from my uh, from my boss, a Chromebook, um, a convertible tablet, all-in-one type Chromebook, or a convertible is the correct term, a convertible Chromebook because they they're great when you're trying to you know run through, you know rooms and buildings, um, taking notes and evaluate you know. One of the things I have to do is I have to maintain an inventory of all of our equipment. And occasionally I have to walk through and check on machines that aren't reporting on our um, Spiceworks server or figure out you know, what's going on with this or that or make manual adjustments and occasionally I do have to go from site to site to do these things. I, I also do a lot of tech support that's my primary role. Tech support, hardware support and all repairs. I'm the only one doing this and I'm all over the place at all times. So I asked, um, in addition to my MacBook Pro, which I use at my desk, 
a smaller device and she says well we have all these Chromebooks that you can have, that we we decided not to purchase any more of take a look and pick one you like so I found this one now this one was new in the box it actually because of its small size um, this was a uh, it was a 10 inch display because of its small size um, this was immediately rejected by my by my peers uh, because they were looking at more of a an 11 inch or up to 13 inch size so what we have here is an Asus C101P now this is a convertible it is made of aluminum like it really is aluminum this and that's one of the things that caught my eye it's like it's all aluminum construction so it's pretty lightweight and it's very sturdy and um, one of the things I liked about it was its smaller size the 10 inch screen fits nicely in my arm as I'm walking through the building I can what I've actually done is I've moved all of my spreadsheets that contain um, you know all the pertinent data that I deal with on a regular basis I've moved it all into Google Sheets and I'm very happy with it I find that Google Sheets for someone who's not using it for financial reasons or financial purposes or using any special functions of any kind Google Sheets um, does everything I need it to do and it's even easier to use than Microsoft Excel in fact most of our users have migrated to Google Sheets and Google Google Docs um, one of the one of the places where Chrome OS really shines and you don't even need a Chromebook for this you can just use a you know Google Chrome web browser on any compatible machine and it's great for collaborating with other people in a team and we found that Google Apps are just fantastic for that. Um, I find that I'm using Microsoft Word almost zero times out of the day. I, I don't even use Word or Excel anymore. It's crazy. As a matter of fact, even uh, the PowerPoint slideshows that our uh, administrative team often uses for various purposes are now being made in Google Slides. And everyone seems to be loving this. Um, so, yeah, but I wanted to push this machine a little bit further. I wanted to see what else I could do with it. Because it's so small and so convenient, it gets an, about nine hours of battery life. Yeah, that's a little low for such a device like this, but nine hours is decent for me. And I'm like, what else can I do with this thing? Can I use it for remote desktop applications? And then I stumbled upon... Um, Chrome Remote Desktop. And well, let's take a look. So Chrome Remote Desktop allows me to um, control my MacBook Pro, which is sitting on my desk three towns away. And the cool thing about this is it doesn't require a VPN or anything like that. It just has a, a, um, a host application on the, de on, on the destination machine that's running it. And I'm using just a Chrome browser. I could do this, I could do this with a Chromecast, I bet. And I'm going to put in my magic, my magic code here. It's a six-digit code. It has to be numerical, I believe. And I'm going to connect to my laptop on my desk using all free software. Uh, none of this software costs anything except my soul because it's cloud-based and all that. And I'm going to connect to my, there's my MacBook Pro. So I'm using, I have, right, at this point, I have a MacBook Pro tablet. And there's a few glitches here and there. Like, for example, the on-screen keyboard doesn't appear to work. I'm going to put in my password so I can log in here. And there I am. There's a full screen MacBook Pro in tablet form. <laughs> now it is a bit laggy. Look, I can even run FileMaker on it. See? Now one of the things you might be wondering about these tablet mach or these convertible machines is that the keyboard, well, what do you do with it when it's in tablet mode? Well the keyboard is ignored, it's disabled when it's in this position, so it doesn't do anything. And um, let's see if I can still get to my old database that I don't use anymore. Let's see. I 
think we took most of this stuff online. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. But it's almost in real time. Now let's uh, let's open Microsoft Remote Desktop and let's let's go on to an, or, we're going to remote into a machine that is remoted into another machine. So I'm going to go into my Active Directory server from this device three towns over without a VPN. And there it is. <laughs> This works really well. I mean, really well. I am remoted into, remoted into, remote. I'm, I'm, I might go one more step. I think there's a... No, there isn't. I'm just kidding. But here we go. There's our Active Directory server on a Chromebook using all free software. It's just cool how we've really... I mean, is this a good thing? Well, maybe. Maybe not. Um, Now I just thought of one one slight minor problem. So I have to send a control alt delete command to get to the, oh, no I don't. I, I don't I don't need to do that. I'm going to I'm going to close out this session here. Let's see. This little pop up here on the top left hand corner right hand corner of the screen. This is to control the uh the Chrome remote desktop uh, session. So you can send your control alt delete command here. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that does anything. No, because it's sending it to the Mac, not to the Windows machine. Anyway. So I can control oh there we go. I got my, my pull down bar. It's a little laggy, but it works. And on certain days, this would be very handy. I don't need the Chromebook to do this, obviously. I just need a Chrome browser. So I can actually connect using um using my work account I can connect into um, my laptop at home from my iMac or from my home theater PC so that's that's quite handy but there's another wild feature I'm going to show you guys that this Chromebook can do uh, that you wouldn't expect it's like the unexpected extra that I'm like this isn't going to work and it did so I'm going to log off. I'm going to do stop sharing on my screen there. So I have uh, ended my connection. And we're going to go ahead and grab, oh, I don't know. How about a zip drive? What happens when you connect a zip drive to a Chromebook? Well, let's see. Right now I have my wireless mouse dongle in there. I'll take that out. Yes, you can use a mouse and a keyboard on a Chromebook. So here's my zip drive, and let's see. I'll plug this in, and we'll see what it does. So while it's reading the disk, let's talk about what the specs are in this thing. It must be really unimpressive, right? You're right, it is, because it's a Chromebook. Of course it's unimpressive. All right, so let's check out this uh, application called File Viewer. And there we go. Zip 250. There's all the stuff on the Zip 250. Obviously, none of this will run on the Chromebook. But if we wanted to copy this stuff to Google Drive or, hell, even locally, we have approximately 16 gigabytes of local storage to play with. And if that's not enough, I can simply add a micro SD card and increase it to whatever, <laughs> whatever size card I have, which is pretty cool. But spec-wise, this device um, features a Rockchip OP1RK3399 system on chip, so that's not really a dedicated processor. Basically, it's the entire system on a chip, and those are nothing new. In fact, uh, a little while ago, I had a, I think I did a video on an early web TV style appliance that was made by Newcom. And it also used a system on chip, and that was back in 1997. So those are not a new idea. It's just, you know, system on chip is your, your GPU, your CPU, I believe North and South Bridge, all in one chip, which is, uh, it just makes it for better packaging, and that's all. Uh, 16 gigs of onboard storage and about 4 gigs of RAM, a 10.1 inch display. This is an in plane uh, switching display. Nine hours of battery life, and it has, I believe, one USB 2.0, or is that a 3.0? I 
Let's see. I'm going to unplug this. I believe this is a USB 3.0. No, it's a 2.0. Yeah, they really phoned it in on that, didn't they? That's a USB 2.0, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, we got that. Is it really? No, it really is. Uh, we've got one... We have one... One, two... Yep, yeah, two... Um, USB-C ports. One micro SD slot. I thought there was another one. No, there isn't. On this side, we've got volume up, volume down, power, power status, charge status, and we've got a headphone jack. It actually has a headphone jack in addition to Bluetooth, so that's pretty handy. I don't know what the processor speed is, but let's be honest with ourselves, it doesn't matter. On a device this low end, it really doesn't matter. But what do you pay for something like this? 100 200 No, it's $300 for this machine, and uh, I think this one actually has 32 gigs of onboard storage. Let's see if it'll tell me. That's Google Drive. I'm still getting used to, uh, to Chrome OS. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably... I can get into the system specs here. Right, settings. I spend all of my time servicing these devices rather than actually using them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it has. Wow. Yeah, this is 16 gig. Uh, absolutely. 1.4 gigs in use. 8.9 available. So 9, 10. And the rest of it is unaccessible. So that's 16 gigs total. That's including the OS. Um, but that's not bad. I mean, again, it has a micro SD slot, so I can expand it if I need to. But once again, I mean, these devices were designed for cloud use, and cloud use almost exclusively. So you're not going to have or need all that onboard storage. Um, but like I said earlier, this is not a replacement for your Windows machine or your Mac. But getting back to computers for rag average regular people who just need a device for social media, billing, web browsing, email, things like that, you can't go wrong with something like this. Anyone in my family who needs a computer from here on out, I'm going to recommend a Chromebook or something like it, like a Chromebase. A Chromebase is uh, an all-in-one desktop format, if you will, and you can simply use one of those for everything my parents do. That's perfect. That's all they need. But will it work with a floppy drive? Let's find out. I have my doubts, but then again, I've been, I've been surprised before. Can you use a USB floppy drive with a Chromebook? We know you can use a mouse and keyboard. It's not even worth showing you. But will it work with a floppy drive? Apparently so. Uh, it will work with a floppy drive. Unbelievable. There it is. Oh my god. Can I format it though? Can I format a floppy disk on a Chromebook? Yes, I can. Would you believe it? Yes, I can. It formatted relatively quickly. Now, what if I copy something to that disk? What can I copy to that disk? Well, let's do this. We're going to log off of this account, log into my other account. Well, it appears we're having some difficulties with the floppy drive connected. It seems to be wanting to not start up. <laughs> um, oh, there it goes. I guess we're, we're fine now. So let me put in my... Uh, Yeah, the keyboard is a little small, a little cramped, but that's okay. Again, it's not a replacement for my laptop or my desktop. It's more to supplement the usage. But for the average person, a device like this, or maybe one a little bit larger, would be perfect. Um, I'm going to log into my Google account, and we're going to proceed from there. 
Okay, it's now reading from the floppy drive to see what's going on with that, and it's syncing. The initial login does take a little bit, um, a little bit longer than it normally would. I don't normally use this account with a Chromebook, so it's loading the default background image. And let's, I mean, you know what I want to do? I want to take a look at my home theater PC from here. So let's do that. Let's, let's open up our um, remote desktop application. And I'm going to drag it to my taskbar down here because I want to make it easier to get to for future access. Which I should be able to do with ease. Or not. Um, remote assistance. Get started. Yeah, here we go. So I've already got two machines in my house loaded into remote desktop. So I've got my home theater PC and my iMac. So let's open up the home theater PC. Put it in my code. Which is... I'm not showing you my code. There. And like magic, there it is. So here's my Windows home theater PC. And I need to close this window. It's a little bit laggy. But then again, what do you want for free? Um, but what is, of course, that leads up to the, uh, the never-ending question of what is the cost of free? What does free really cost? We'll find out in a few years when somebody goes out of business for it. But anyway, obviously it's hooked up to a 4x3 projector, so yeah. But there it is. It works. Now if I had my... Um, let's see if we can open a video. Let's see. Where do I store my stuff on this thing? Like I'm supposed to know this, right? Again, a bit laggy. Let's see if we can start a movie. This is really laggy. Like, more so than I expected. Come on. Alright. Be that way, then. <laughs> it's really slow. Okay then. Well, I guess we've reached the limits of my router. I don't have this problem at work. It works fine there. Oh, this is working great. Yeah, my router just sort of choked, and that will happen from time to time. So, there we go. Let's see. We're now watching a movie on my server using a remote desktop. Now this would work better if I just launched the, um, the um, Plex Hello, app. So it even transfers audio. Look. Obviously that's not the most efficient way of doing business. But it actually transmits the audio as well, so that's... That's pretty handy. So we're gonna just, we're gonna stop the share. Stop sharing, please. Come on. For my next trick, what we're going to do is we're going to print a document on this Google Chromebook, but not exactly. We're gonna print the document that was created on the Google Chromebook and in a fairly roundabout way. Now it said that Google Chrome does not support printing. That is false. You can print using uh, cloud print using a device or a printer that is compatible with the service. Uh, my HP OfficeJet is one such device. But we're not going to use that. We're going to do things a little differently. So the document that I'm going to print is a sample resume that is included 
uh, with the uh, Google Docs application. It's a simple resume. What we're going to do it differently. We're going to save it as a text file. I've already saved it as a text file. And I've downloaded it. And here it is. What we have here is a floppy disk, which we'll now insert into the external floppy drive using Chrome OS. You're going to love this, if it works. Okay, we've detected the floppy drive. Boom, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to take my resume, I'm going to transfer it to my floppy disk. Okay, we're going to safely eject the disk and eject it from the drive for real. Resume. Which brings us to square one. Computing of yesteryear. The dying breed. The old guard. Grandpa's old crunching machine. What's going to happen? Well, it read the disk, but will it read the resume? There it is. Now, obviously, because we saved it as a text file, all the formatting is gone, but will it print? And they say you can't print from a Chromebook. <laughs> if you really want to be cool, you can throw a little color in there and print it with a four color ribbon. And I wonder why I'm still single. This, this just amuses me. Backwards compatibility is still possible in today's world. And that's our lesson for the day. Thank you for watching. Stay obsolete, my friends. Stay obsolete.